If you haven't already watched my videos on demand, I encourage you to go do that before watching this one. Because now we're going to flip to the other side of the market, supply. And a lot of the things that we talk about on the supply side have um, direct analogies in what we've already discussed on the demand side. And so I may refer back to those things um, or gloss over some things here because we've already uh, discussed them in more detail there. Um, so for example, um, let's start right off with the idea of quantity supply is very similar to the idea of quantity demanded. So the uh, quantity supplied is the amount of a good or service that producers are willing and able to sell at the current price. So quantity demanded was the amount that uh, consumers are willing and able to buy, and quantity supplied is the amount that uh, producers are willing and able to sell. Um, and over when, when I discuss demand, I usually give a table um, for Snickers bars where I have a bunch of prices listed and I ask students to uh, list next to each price how many Snickers bars would you purchase at that um, price. And um, then we describe that table itself as your demand for Snickers bars. We could do the same exact thing on the supply side where I could give you a bunch of prices and I could say, here, I'm giving you um, I'm going to let you give you the materials and let you make uh, Snickers bars. And your question is, how many are you willing to sell um, at each price? So knowing that you could get uh, $2 for every Snickers bar, how many then are you going to work to produce and bring to the market? And for different ones of you, we would see different answers on that table uh, because different ones of you may have different availability of peanuts or may have different um, ability to cook more quickly or, or more slowly or um, more um, with better quality um, or whatever it is. You may have different resources that allow you to give you different willingness or ability to uh, produce and sell uh, Snickers bar. What we would see across all of your tables is the law of supply. We would see that all else equal, there's a direct relationship between price and quantity to supply. Direct being a mathematical term that just means this. If price goes down, then quantity supplied goes down. And if price goes up, then quantity supplied goes up. And you can um, you can think about this if you put on your supplier hat and you think about it from the perspective of the producer or the supplier. If you know you could only get five cents for each Snickers bar, you're not going to bust your behind to get out there and try to sell a bunch of Snickers bars. You just aren't. Um, but if the price that people are willing to pay, if you know that you could go to the market and you could get five bucks per Snickers bar, then you're going to do what it takes to get as many of them as you can out there so that you can sell them, right? Um, so, so this is the law of supply, and, and it's the opposite of what we saw in law of demand, where price goes up, it means quantity demanded goes down. Um, if you're a supplier, it's the other way around. So um, again, just like we saw in, in the demand side, um, we have... Uh, the supply schedule, which is the table showing the relationship between price and quantity supplied. So if I gave you that table of prices for Snickers bars and asked you how many are you going to um, bring to the market at each price, the resulting table, once you filled it in, that would be your supply schedule. And if we were to graph that thing, then we would have a supply curve, the graph for the relationship between price and quantity supplied. Go ahead and pause this right now and think about and maybe pull out a piece of paper and draw for yourself what do you think that curve would lo will look like? If you put price on the vertical axis and you put quantity supplied on the horizontal axis, what's going to be the shape of that supply curve? Now let's look at it. Here's an example. Um, not just our Snickers bar example, but here's the price of salmon. So uh, we've got a, a supplier, a company called Pure Food Fish, um, and at each uh, potential price per pound of salmon that's listed on the left hand side of the table you're given here how many uh, pounds of salmon they're willing to supply to the market um, notice the, the 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 trend here is the law of supply that the higher the price the higher the quantity supplied and the lower the price the lower the quantity supplied of course down to the point where if you can get zero dollars per pound of salmon then you are not going to go to the effort to bring any salmon to the market right um, and so this is the supply schedule for one firm 
pure food fish, um, just like we did in the demand video. Uh, we can um, expand that to talk about market supply rather than supply for just one firm. Um, so the market supply is the horizontal sum of all the individual quantities supplied by each seller in the market at each price. So it works like this, um, where you, if you've got two, or we could have many more and have them all lined up here, uh, suppliers of fish, of salmon, um, and we have each of their, their supply schedules, so pure food fish as well as city fish. Uh, notice pure food is just a larger establishment. They're at every price. They're bringing more to the market, but you still see for both each supplier, um, you still see the law of supply that they want. They will bring more at higher prices and low and less at lower prices. And if we want to know how much salmon is going to be available at the market um, in total, the market supply is just the horizontal sum. Horizontal meaning we're summing across quantities um, for each price. All right. So at twenty dollars, how much will be supplied? We take the supply of one. Uh, one firm plus the supply of the next firm and we get the market supply and of course you could make this um, as large as you needed to for a market with more than two or three um, firms. Now just like we discussed again over in that demand video if you hadn't watched the demand video go watch it because um, we spent a lot of time here where we talk about the difference between quantity demanded and, the, and demand itself. We have the exact same uh, concepts and relationships over here when we're talking about supply. So we have quantity supplied, which is one row of the supply schedule, right? Um, so if I said the price of salmon is $17.50, you could tell me by looking here at this table that pure food fish's supply, uh, quantity supplied is $700. If I tell you the price changes to $10, you can tell me their quantity supplied changes to $400. That's quantity supplied. It's just a point on their table, right? And if we talk, want to talk about supply, it's the whole table itself, right? So these two sound like they're very similar, quantity supplied versus supply, but there's actually a very important difference. That supply itself is that overall, that whole relationship between price and quantity. And, and quantity supplied is just the one point. Um, how much are you going to bring to the market at a given a particular price? What causes a change in quantity supplied? Well, that's a movement along the supply curve or a movement from one uh, cell or one row to another in your supply schedule. All that changed there is the price, right? So if I tell you the price changes, then all you have to do is go back to your table and look and see, oh, then the quantity that I'm going to bring is going to change, right? Um, that's a change in quantity supply. It's a movement along the supply curve, a movement up or down in that table, and it's caused by a change in the price of a good. It's a different point on the same table or the, the, or the same curve. On the other hand, we could have something other than supply that, or other, sorry, other than price that changes in our world and that would cause us to change our supply curve completely. This is something you get new information, new something new happens that now you go back to your drawing board where you originally wrote down how many Snickers bars you're going to sell at each price. Now you go back and you erase and you change that number. At, at five dollars I used to want to bring 50, now I want to bring 400 because something has changed other than price, right? So a change in supply is when your whole picture changes, when that whole curve is going to shift to the right or to the left. Um, the entire supply curve shifts, or the entire supply schedule or table changes. And this is caused by a change in something other than price. It's going to be different supply curves moving to the right or to the left. So here is an example. Here's a supply curve. It is upward sloping. So if you paused your video a while ago to try to draw for yourself or think through for yourself what a supply curve looks like, hopefully this is what you um, envisioned or pictured. An upward sloping curve. This upward slope um, indicates that law of supply, the relationship between price and quantity supplied. The higher the price, the higher the quantity supplied. So we have an upward sloping supply curve. And in this case, let's say uh, the price 
of a cup of coffee is three bucks. Um, and so the number that we will, so the quantity we will supply to the market is Q1. You can attach an actual number to it if you don't like letters. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, what could happen to cause a decrease in supply? What would change your mind about how many cups of coffee you are willing or able to sell at three dollars? Notice the price doesn't change, but your ideas, your thoughts about how much you can sell is going to change. What would do that? So here's an example. A hurricane destroys the Colombian coffee crop and causes sellers to produce less coffee. If you are a mom and pop or, or even a Starbucks, uh, uh, if you're a coffee shop and all of a sudden in Colombia, the place where you get your coffee beans from, there's a giant hurricane and you it's harder now for you to get your, um, your coffee beans, that means that you're going to supply less coffee even if the price hasn't changed, right? So your supply curve shifts to the left, you see a decrease in supply. I warned you of this in the demand video. I'm going to warn you again. Don't think about these as up and down shifts. Think about them as left and right. So picture a number line and the left means a decrease and the right means an increase. That's particularly important with supply um, because if you notice here, a leftward shift also looks like an upward shift. This is not an upward shift. This is not an increase. This is a decrease in supply when we move from S1 to S3. We're going to the left. It's a decrease even though it kind of looks like it moved up. It didn't move up. It moved left, right? Um, on the other hand, what's something that could cause our supply of coffee to increase? Well, one example is maybe we get some new technology, a new way to brew a richer coffee at half the cost, right? It doesn't cost us as much to, to brew an, an even nicer coffee. Um, now we can produce more even at the same uh, <clears throat> the same price. So supply shifts to the left and right, just like we saw that demand can shift to the left and right. So um, we spent a whole video talking about the things that would cause could cause demand to shift. Let's think about some of the things that could cause supply to shift. One is the cost of inputs. Now inputs, remember, are the things you put in, the resources used in the production process. So for example, those Colombian coffee beans. If you are a coffee shop and you sell coffee, coffee beans are part of your inputs. If you sell Snickers bars, peanuts are part of your inputs. If the cost of peanuts all of a sudden goes up, then the number of Snickers bars that you're able to supply to the market is going to go down. The cost of your inputs will affect how much you can supply to the market. And two, changes in technology or production processes. So technology, the knowledge that you have about how to produce your product. If, um, so in the coffee example, you get a brand new way to brew some nice coffee that takes half the time, right? You get new technology, it can change, it can increase your ability to supply things uh, to the market at, at the same price. Um, <clears throat> Next, and we saw these uh, taxes and subsidies show up over in things that would shift demand, and they're very similar in how they shift supply. So whether, whether a tax shifts demand or shifts supply depends on who the government um, levies the tax on. So if the, tax, if the government says to the people buying stuff, for each gallon of milk that you buy, you must give us $2, that's going to be a tax that shifts demand because it's a tax on consumers. On the other hand, if the government says to the producer of milk, for every gallon that you produce and sell, you have to give us money, that's going to be a tax that affects, um, that shifts supply. So a tax um, that's paid by the producer is essentially an added cost of production. This is very similar to saying that the price of peanuts went up, um, and so you can't supply as many uh, Snickers bars, right? If you know you have to pay the government for everything that you produce, it's an added cost of production. It means you can't produce as much. Your supply will shift to the left. A subsidy is the opposite of a tax. This is when the government encourages production of a particular product. Um, this happens a lot in farming industry. There are farm subsidies to encourage production of agricultural products in the U.S. Um, so a subsidy is when the government pays you to produce and it 
does the opposite of what a tax does. It reduces the cost of production and therefore can shift your supply curve to the right. It can increase the amount that you're able to supply. Um, other things that, that can that shift supply, the number of firms in the industry, this one's a little bit of an obvious one, um, the more sellers, uh, the more supply. So new uh, burger joint moves into town, um, all of a sudden there's more burgers um, in the market. Um, and then uh, number five, and we talked about this also on the demand side, price expectations. What do you think is going to happen tomorrow? That will affect what you do today. So if you expect that tomorrow you'll be able to get a higher price for a particular product, then um, maybe put it on the back shelf today. Don't try to push it out the door today because you know if you wait and sell it tomorrow, you'll get more for it, right? So, so your supply of a particular product may be lower today if you think you can get a higher price for it tomorrow. And vice versa, if you expect the price of your product to go down tomorrow, then you push it today. You try to get people to buy it today and your, your supply then um, might increase uh, today. So those are the, the, the main factors that shift um, that shifts supply.